Why do dogs love to chase their own tails? There's no one single reason why lots of dogs seem to make a game of spinning in a circle chasing their own tail. According to canine experts, there could be a couple different reasons for it. When a pup is bored or stressed out, they might decide to start a game of catch the tail on the doggy to relax and have some fun. Think of it a bit like a dog's version of tapping your foot or bouncing up and down when you're stressed or bored. All that energy has to go somewhere. That's why puppies tend to chase their tails more than adult dogs. They have tons of puppy energy to expend every day, and that wagging tail looks an awful lot like a toy. Another reason pups spin in circles hunting their own hindquarters? Attention! Puppies figure out pretty quick that doing certain things gets their human family to react, pay attention to them, and just about every dog loves that. So, the more you laugh, play, and pet your dogs when they chase their tails, the more likely they're going to keep doing it. Some dog breeds seem to love chasing their tails more than others. Both German Shepherds and Terriers tend to be big-time tail chasers, even as they age. No one knows for sure why that is, but it may just be because those breeds tend to be extra energetic and have a lot of extra energy to burn off. If your dog just won't stop, then you might want to take them in. Some dogs chew and bite at their tail so much that they cause hair loss or even permanent damage. Excessive tail chewing could be a sign of worms, fleas, or other skin issues that are making your pup uncomfortable. So, why do dogs chase their tails? The answer seems to be pretty simple. Because it's fun when they're bored, and funny when we give them attention and play along. So, next time your dog decides to make a game of chasing its own tail, you'll know why. And maybe join in. Will chocolate kill your dog? Okay, let's start with the basics. Humans have cultivated the cacao beans for at least 3,500 years. The Olmecs of southern Mexico were probably the first people to grind and roast the beans for food and drinks. But before your mouth starts watering, it was nothing like the chocolate we eat today. The Aztecs called chocolate chocolate, which means sour or bitter drink. Today, chocolate tastes so good because we add lots of sugar to make it sweet and tasty. So it's no wonder that people everywhere want to share it with their pets. But beware, because what they say is true. Chocolate definitely is toxic to dogs. That's because chocolate contains caffeine and a chemical called theobromine. When humans eat these chemicals, we just get a little jolt of energy because we can process them quickly. Dogs, however, aren't quite as lucky. They process these chemicals slower, which makes the effects much stronger. If a canine eats too much chocolate, they can have diarrhea, vomiting, muscle spasms, excessive panting, hyperactive behavior, and even seizures. Okay, so chocolate is bad for dogs, but is it toxic enough to kill them? Well, in severe cases, they can overheat, have trouble breathing, or even experience an irregular heartbeat, all of which can cause death. So how much chocolate is too much for a pooch? Well, it depends on the size of the dog and the kind of chocolate. Smaller dogs will have more severe reactions, and the amount of caffeine and theobromine in chocolate varies. Cocoa powder has the most, then unsweetened baker's chocolate, then dark chocolate, then milk chocolate. That means it would take around two and a half regular sized chocolate bars to hurt a dog the size of a chocolate lab. You might be surprised how many other common foods are dangerous for dogs. You should never feed your dog avocados, onions, garlic, coffee, grapes, macadamia nuts, or overly salty or sugary foods. But don't worry, you can still give your best friend some human food treats. Just stick to unseasoned lean meats like turkey, fruits without seeds or stems, and a few vegetables like carrots, green beans, and cucumber. You know, like your mom eats. So, can chocolate kill your canine? Yeah, it can, especially if it gets into cocoa powder. But regular old chocolate bars will probably just give them a bad stomach ache. That is, unless they really pig out. In other words, just don't take your puppy trick-or-treating. Why do dogs bury bones? It might seem strange to us humans that our little buddies love to take their favorite chew toys and bury them in the backyard, but for dogs, the reason seems to actually be quite sensible. They want to save it for later. It's called food caching, and it's something lots of dogs do naturally. 
Food caching is when a dog or any animal stashes away food supplies for later. It's most common among birds, squirrels, and other animals looking to survive cold winter months. Even though dogs have spent ages as a domesticated pet, they still have some hardwired traits from back when they lived in the wild. Dogs are descended from ancient gray wolves who were food cachers themselves. And it seems that instinct never went away, even after all these years spent as a pet out of the wild. Most of the time, wolves eat all their prey before they move on. But from time to time, they'll carry their kill to a special spot and stash it away for later. Even little wolf pups are known to bury things for later. Sometimes, they'll even move their buried treasures around so their brothers and sisters won't find it. And it's no different with dogs. They might not need to bury their food for later, but they still have an instinct to hide their most prized possessions where they won't be found. Bones are a common one, but there's seemingly no limit to the prized possessions that a dog will bury. Toys, stuffed animals, rocks, or even household items you might not want buried in the dirt. Depending on the breed and personality of a dog, they might store their stuff for a month, a week, or just a day. Some dogs can't help but dig it back up just minutes later. So, why do dogs bury bones? Well, because dogs are descended from ancient gray wolves who were food cachers themselves. And it seems that instinct never went away, even after all these years spent as a domesticated pet. So, whether it's tomorrow's meal or a little piece of doggy treasure, it's a pretty nifty way to hide stuff as a dog. Or maybe a pirate. What causes dogs to lick everything in sight? According to most experts, dogs tend to lick for lots of different reasons. But one of the main ones is to tell you that they love you. The way we cuddle our pups to get them all the attention they deserve is usually by hugging them, kissing them, patting their heads, and petting them. Most dogs want to express their love right back to you, so they copy you by giving you a doggy version of a hug or kiss, a lick. And licking feels good to a dog. Hormones called endorphins are released in the dog's brain, which lowers their stress level and makes them feel happy. If you own a dog, you probably notice that they lick for lots of other reasons too. Sometimes it's simply because they like the taste. Our skin actually tastes a little bit salty, and dogs know that. Sometimes they'll lick your skin, seemingly at random, just to get a little salty treat. It's something that's kind of cute for a dog to do, but really creepy when a person does it. But there's also a practical reason dogs lick, so they can learn about their environment. Sight and smell are obvious ways that dogs use their senses to learn about their surroundings. But taste is also a crucial way dogs get comfy in a new space. But sometimes dogs just lick because they're bored. Giving them toys and walks helps them get out their energy so they stop licking your toys. Hopefully. And you can't talk about a dog's lick without mentioning the drooling. When dogs get excited about something, like say a snack, their mouths start making extra saliva, which can drool right out of their mouths. All dogs can drool, but some are especially slobbery. So if you happen to own a bulldog, mastiff, St. Bernard, bloodhound, or basset hound, maybe just keep a handkerchief handy, or maybe an umbrella. Why do dogs sniff butts? It might look funny when a dog has his nose buried in another dog's butt but in canine culture, it's an important way to get info about the other animal. You see, dogs have a really good sense of smell, up to 100,000 times better than humans. And because of that, smell is the main way that dogs learn. That's why dogs are always sniffing everywhere they go, especially on walks. All those smells we can't even detect are giving them all sorts of info about their surroundings. Okay, so dogs sniff in order to understand, but why the butt? Well, that has to do with a special organ in their nose called a Jacobson's organ. This organ takes care of the main problem of sniffing a dog's butt by completely ignoring the poop smell. The organ detects certain chemicals that help keep the body healthy. The smell of those chemicals tells dogs a ton about each other. 
whether they're male or female, their age, what kind of food they eat, how healthy they are, and even if they're angry or scared. A dog can also sniff out whether they've met before or if they're complete strangers and how to act around one another. So next time you see two dogs sniffing each other's butts, don't get grossed out, they're just making new friends. What causes dogs to constantly tilt their head and why is it so cute? They might not be able to understand exactly what we're saying, but dogs are still very good at understanding body language, vocal cues, and tone of voice. That means when you use a stern voice with your dog, they might not get exactly what you're saying, but they know for a fact that you're mad at them and they're in trouble. The same is true when you're sweet and playful with them. Most dogs crave your love and attention, so they'll watch and listen for any cues that they might have been a good dog. So, many experts believe that when a pup tilts its head to the side as you speak to them, it's very likely because they're trying to listen in extra carefully to what you're saying. They're looking for vocal cues that might mean a meal, a walk, or anything else they enjoy. You might be wondering why tilting their heads would help dogs hear better. It has to do with the way a dog's ear is formed. You see, dogs can detect very, very small differences in how long it takes a sound to reach each of their ears. So, when they tilt their head, it's likely because they're adjusting their outer ear so they can better pinpoint where a sound is coming from. Some, however, believe it has more to do with a dog's vision than its hearing. The theory is that having a snout sticking out of their face makes it a bit harder for dogs to see. The snout would get in the way as they try and watch your face for expressions. Tilting their head might give them a better view of our mouths and faces so they get a better sense of what we're trying to say. So like all kinds of other animal behaviors, experts still aren't quite sure why dogs tilt their heads like they do. But whatever the reason, they're pretty sure it has a lot to do with them trying to understand us. And that's just about as cute as, well, just about everything else a dog does. Well, almost everything. Why are dogs people's best friend? Our relationship with dogs dates back a really, really, really long time. Our connection with dogs dates so far back that no one can say for sure exactly when it started. But most experts point to an ancient breed of wolf called tamer wolves as our first friend. Why wolves? Well, modern-day dogs are actually their direct descendants. In fact, dogs share more than 99% of their DNA with wolves. The process of training a wild animal to obey is called domestication. But humans weren't doing it because they wanted a cuddly companion. They needed help to survive. Over time, domesticated wolves evolved into dogs as we know and love them today. They became close companions who helped us hunt for food and guard our dens while we fed them and kept them safe from the outside world. Over time, the relationship deepened and grew. Before long, dogs weren't just hunters and protectors, but loyal and affectionate friends. Eventually, they took the next step and became a pet whose main role was to be an adorable member of the family, whether they contribute or not. Okay, so that's the basics of how dogs went from wild wolves to man's best friend, but why dogs? After all, there are stronger and bigger animals out there. Well, the truth is, they're kind of the perfect companion for humans. Small enough to live close, strong enough to defend the den, extremely loyal, and most important, just like humans, they tend to work much better in a group. All that makes us natural partners. Nowadays, dogs tend to spend their time hunting down tennis balls and protecting the house by barking at any squirrel that scuttles by. But they're still our greatest companion. And while they don't do as much hunting or security, they still find all kinds of important ways to help us. Take seeing eye dogs, for example. Dogs can be trained to help someone without their sight to get around our busy modern world without much problem. And that's just the start. There are dogs that help sniff people out in disasters, dogs who can detect seizures, dogs who sniff to keep us safe, 
and even simple emotional support dogs that help stressed people relax. So while they might not be the big bad wolf dogs they used to be when we first became friends, they're still as important to us as ever. 